Why did you decide to write it this way? Uh, for several reasons, because uh, uh, you know, as a Cree man, um, that's usually how I react to things that, uh, that bother me and, and to ease the tension. That's how we are. And uh, that's why I wrote it that way, uh, first of all. Second of all, um, the, the letter is uh, uh, insensitive, ignorant about uh, Aboriginal issues. Uh, it's also uh, insulting to me. Uh, those remarks were insulting, bordering on racism, mm -hmm. in my view. So I, I couldn't let the Prime Minister off the hook uh, with those comments that he made uh, in Winnipeg and Saskatoon, I believe, uh, because he made them twice in or <coughs> two days in a row. So I think it's, it was important to, to react to, to them. So, so I, I get what you're saying. Do you, do you think that there was ill intent behind the, the comments, though, or do you think it was about trying to help Indigenous people sort of reconnect with their culture? Well, um, the fact that he repeated those remarks uh, two days in a row uh, is telling. Mm -hmm. And knowing that uh, he committed to a nation-to-nation -nation relationship with Indigenous peoples of this country, he, com he, he even said that the most important relationship is going to be with Indigenous peoples. Right. Well, he should be aware that, that the, the challenges that we have in this country as Indigenous peoples are way more serious and way more grave mm -hmm. than having sheds for our canoes and paddles. So how would you characterize then the comment? Condescending? Uh, what, 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 you know, how would you characterize it? It's ignor it? ignorant and yeah. insensitive um, and insulting. Uh, those are the three words that came to mind right away after I heard uh, the comment the first time. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew I had to do something about it because uh, he should know as a prime minister that uh, the challenges that we have in this country are serious, are grave, and we need to work on them right away. Stop this rhetoric mm -hmm. and let's get on with work uh, you, as, uh, as partners in this country. Do, do you think that he really doesn't know that, though? I mean, he, he is, you know, he's right now. He was just in Iqaluit yesterday. He's traveling. Do you think that he is really ignorant or that the comments were badly formed? Well, one thing that, uh, that escapes me in all of this is that he bothered to repeat them twice. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in public forums, uh, that's troubling for me. Mm -hmm. um, while he surely must know that our kids and youth are take, still taking their lives, our women uh, and girls are still disappearing yeah. or getting murdered, our people lack housing and clean drinking water in our communities. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the challenges, our kids are continuing to be discriminated by this very government as we speak. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things that he should be talking about, not sheds for canoes and paddles. So, so a, cu a couple of things. It, it, uh, given you're a Cree man and you, you know lots of people in the community, what, what do kids need? If you were going to educate him about what would be useful, the most useful thing for young Indigenous people right now, what, what would it be? Well, I make reference in the letter to the fact that I co-founded the, the, the Cree Nation Youth Council yeah. back in 1985. So I've been in this business for a long time. <laughs> I haven't heard once in my lifetime, throughout my, my career as a politician and as a uh, political and legal advisor, not once that I've heard that youth need sheds for their canoes and paddles. Not once. I've traveled with the Standing Committee on Aboriginal Affairs over the last couple of months hearing uh, from elders, from youth, from leaders, not once that we heard mm. during those hearings that the communities need sheds for their canoes. I think we're talking more about community centers, yeah. uh, resources to help them out uh, with their mental health issues. Housing is a big issue throughout the country in every riding in this country where there are indigenous communities, including in mine, although we have a James Bay and Northern Quebec agreement, housing is still an issue yeah. in, in my riding. Education, if we want our kids to graduate, well, we need schools for that. Yeah. Those are the kind of issues that they talk about, and those are the kind of challenges that we need to tackle in this country. Now, you, you did have the Minister of Indigenous Affairs, Carolyn Bennett, up there in January announcing a new school in your region, did you not? So it, it, do you see any evidence that, that they are making progress? Well, that school that we opened back in January 2017 uh, was in the works for the last uh, eight to nine years. Yeah. So the, 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 these issues take a long time, mm -hmm. although most Canadians take a brand new school for granted, not Indigenous kids in this country. Mm. Uh, so we need to make sure that the promises that we make to Indigenous peoples are kept, are worked on rapidly. Yeah. Uh, I heard the Parliamentary Secretary 
uh, in the House today talk about the fact that they've they've uh, settled uh, or fixed uh, water boiling uh, uh, advisories, issue, yeah. uh, um, advisors in, yeah. in eight communities uh, or 18 yes. um, today, uh, but there are more than 130 of them. Uh, so at, so at, the, at the pace and at the rate we're fixing this, yeah. we, will, we won't be able to deliver on that promise that the Liberals made to First Nations issues about, about water in their communities. It, so it, this, this letter has taken off on social media, and I don't have yes. to tell you that, particularly when it, within Indigenous people, but also uh, right across the country. Mm -hmm. what, have you had a response from the Prime Minister? And if not, what kind of response would you like? Well, uh, I think he has to take uh, a few response. If he dares to respond, uh, then he has to uh, take the issue seriously. The ones that I raised, not only in the letter, but the ones I'm raising to, uh, in this interview. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they're serious and they're grave. Um, I'm pretty uh, uh, heartbroken every time I travel through uh, to indigenous communities in, in this country mm -hmm. to see that in one of the richest countries in the world, uh, a lot of them still live in third world conditions. So while Canada will be celebrating and partying this year for their 150th birthday, uh, those kids still will still uh, be taking their lives. Uh, a lot of our people will still need a roof over the house mm -hmm. to stop this overcrowding in the houses throughout the country and so on. So I think uh, we need these, to take these uh, questions seriously, especially in this context of 150th of the Canadian Confederation. Listen, politicians have to find all different ways to bring attention to issues, and you, and you sure did with that letter. So I appreciate your time today, Romeo Saganash. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we requested some comment from the Prime Minister's office on Saganash's letter, and they did send us uh, this response. It reads, in part, the Prime Minister was reflecting on countless conversations he has had over many years regarding challenges facing Indigenous youth. It's important for him to hear the perspectives and ideas from everyone, including leaders, young people, parents and elders, in order to better understand the issues they are facing and how best they can be addressed from community to community.